here's where we're going to begin. Now, you'll get these questions a lot, and they appear a lot in two unit, by the way. So we really want to master this skill. You should be suspicious of this, right? You remember I said I'll often give you questions that uh, will shed light on other questions, right? So that you can see the connections between them. Which question on the board is closest to this one? Sun theory. It's just the very first one, right? This guy is more or less identical to this, right? It's just that I've popped in a pronoun rule. I've said, what's x? Except you already know what x is, right? So it's reasonable to say x equals 30 degrees. It certainly worked for us before, didn't it? Okay. Now, that's our intuition. You can go to your calculator, right? And you can confirm this as well by saying, see how um, at, let's see, this point here, you remember what we were saying? Do something to both sides. Do something to both sides so that you can simplify things, right? Well, what would I do to both sides here to get that x by itself so it's simpler, right? And the answer is if I want to get rid of sine, you've used this before even as early as last year, um, on your calculator above the sine button, where is it? There it is. You've got this little thing which says, I'll even draw it for you. <coughs> on the sine button, right above it, you've got this guy. Okay, there's a sign and there's a little minus one in the index, okay? Uh, what's that thing called? What's that thing called? Sign inverse. Sign inverse, very good. Please, despite the fact of how it looks, please don't read that as sign to the minus one. Um, that minus one is meant to indicate, I want you to undo whatever sign did. I want you to undo it. We have a technical name for this, it's called um, an inverse function, which is why we have this, right? It's like, like doing it in reverse, okay? So, being that I want to use sine inverse here, right, to confirm this result, I can try this. I can write this down and then I can pop it in my calculator. I'm going to do sine inverse to both sides. That'll get rid of sine here and it'll put sine inverse over here on the right hand side, okay? This is just like if you had an equation x over 2, you multiply both sides by 2, no big deal. Same thing to both sides. Now go ahead, test it out, go to your calculator, press shift sign, shift sign and chuck 0.5 in there and sure enough right it tells you yeah you were right the first time x equals 30 no big deal the only problem is it's wrong oh. kind of okay so let me explain right 30 degrees is one of the answers I mean, I mean you told me that right at the start of the lesson okay but it's not the only answer Have you see any questions here right remember how i was like oh i'll test out minus five and it'll work Okay, I put it in, uh, it checks out. Okay? But I can also put in two. Quadratics, right? Quadratic equations, they have multiple solutions. They usually have two, right? Trigonometric equations, just like quadratic equations, they also have multiple solutions. And to prove it to you, I'm going to ask you to go back to where you were doing this. You got uh, all those graphs there. Can you turn back uh, a handful of pages, however many it is for you, and go to those graphs? Okay, now once you turn there, um, I actually want you to take this sign graph, and it is worth, if your sign graph doesn't look like nice and clean, like if there's extra stuff on it, like say this one, see I've got lots of extra stuff on there because we were trying to graph tan on this one. I want you to take your graph and make me a little copy um, on your fresh page based on what you've drawn before. Okay. Make me a new sign curve. I do. If anyone needs rulers, you can come and grab one.
Once you've drawn it, I'd like you to look up just so I know you're ready because this next part's going to be quite visual. So I'm going to ask you to watch it first before you draw it as well. Okay, it's alright if you're not finished. It's roughly enough time. Put your pens down for a second and watch what happens next because this is a crucial idea. Remember I asked you to solve this pair of equations over here, right? Uh, x squared plus 3x minus 4 is 0. And then the same thing... X Why did I do that? Because I wanted to illustrate something. This is my graph of y equals that, that same quadratic that you were solving and working with before, okay? x squared plus 3x minus 4. Now, how do I know it looks like this? There's a few things I can say. Number one, can you see this is a, it's a smiley, it's a facing up parabola, it's not a facing down parabola. How do I know? There's a single number that tells me it's going up, not going down. Can anyone tell me which number it is? It's, it's because there's a plus, the plus I'm interested in is one that's actually hiding. It's the one in front of the x squared, right? Now when you write a number like 7, you, we don't say, oh, it's plus 7. You kind of assume it's positive, right? So nothing is written there, but there really is a plus sign there. If I wanted this thing to be facing down, there'd be a minus sign there. And then there isn't, okay? So it's going up, right? Now I also know that I've got this point here and this point here, which are 1 and negative 4. How do I know that? How do I know that those are the values where it hits the x-axis? How do I know those are the intercepts? I know because you told me, right? There it is right there. You factorized it, you factorized it, and you told me x squared plus 3x minus 4, this graph, it's equal to 0 at these points. Where's 0? Here's zero, right? There's the x-axis, right? So at x equals negative four and x equals one, the graph is equal to zero, okay? Another way I could say this is, like the coordinates of these points are minus four comma zero, right? There, there it is, it's equal to zero. And one comma zero, okay? You happy with that? Okay, now have a look at this next equation. It's very sneaky, right? Why did I write it like this? Why not just give it to you in this form? Because that's the one you can factorize and then solve. I wanted to show you there's a relationship between these. If solving this gives me these two values, right, then solving this will give me a different pair of values. It'll give me, let's see, look at my scale. These two values up here. Let me see if I can get this across to you, right? When we say, would you please solve this equation for me? Would you solve this for me? You're thinking about it as what values of x can I put in and it'll work. And that's fine, that is true, okay? But it's more than that, right? When I say solve, what you see on the left-hand side is a graph, there he is, right? What you see on the right-hand side is also a graph. It's the x-axis, y equals zero, right? And what I'm looking for when you solve is tell me where they collide, tell me where they intersect. Tell me where they're equal to each other, right? So these happen to be the two places where that graph and that graph are equal, right? So when you go ahead and solve this question, I'm asking where is this graph equal to that graph, right? There he is, up the top there. There's my y equals 6 graph, okay? So where do they intersect? And you told me at negative 5 and 2. Right? By the way, do you see it has to be that way? Because this shape is symmetrical, negative 4 to negative 5 is one unit that way. 1 to 2 is one unit this way. Okay, so I'm sort of going just out a bit further. And here are my y-coordinates. Okay?